It's Tuesday, April the 18th. Hey, gets hard on refugees. Who can blame him? <laughs> new heads at Sellafield. So, what's new? <laughs> Footballers' wages soar. Not as sore as their girlfriends. Please welcome Mr. Ian Lee. Welcome to the 11 o'clock show. Have you seen Damien Hurst's new masterpiece, which he sold for £1,400? It's shit. It's literally shit. <laughs> but seriously, he's actually flogged a bit of bog roll with some skidders on it. <laughs> it's a bad taste in my mouth. But we've had... <laughs> we've had a cubist movement, an impressionist movement. Now Hurst is cashing in on his bowel movements. <laughs> but I, I find it quite hard to pigeonhole his new work, though. It sort of tends to fall between two stools. <laughs> Big brown ones. But art, art has gone mad. The National Portrait Gallery, this is true, actually has a picture of David Beckham. Posh painted it. Well, someone used her for a brush. <laughs> but, very thin. but I'm a, I'm a big fan of art. I've got an old master hanging in the attic. It's Mr Timkins, my maths teacher from school. <laughs> Nobody criticises Ian Lee's long division and lives to tell the tale. But personally, I, lo I just love collecting art. I say collecting, obviously I mean downloading. And... Uh, <laughs> It, I call it art, but, uh, well, I saw it as a Dada-esque analysis into the futility of the 21st century zeitgeist. The police said it was a woman sucking off a horse. <laughs> but enough, enough art house antics. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the girl who's a real masterpiece. It's Miss Daisy Donovan. <laughs> Is that not nice? Mm. Sorry. Worrying news for gentle farming communities, Ian. You'll be worried about this. Um, the government wants to tattoo the ears of all 44 million sheep in Britain. And what's the only other thing we know about sheep? They get shorn. So now we'll have gangs of shaven-headed, tattooed sheep getting pissed, starting fights and moshing to Chumbawamba. <laughs> they will. Apparently, the tattoos will show where each sheep was born. Some farmers have already complained that yonder field down by the Haywain is too long to fit on a sheep's ear. <laughs> and it is. Daisy, thanks point. for that, but would you tell us what's coming up in tonight's show? OK, still to come tonight. Gossip guru Dominic Mohan joins us live. King of Spin Max Clifford gives us the truth behind the headlines. And as for Ian... I'll be finding out if it's true if smell can enhance your memory. Could someone pull my finger, please? <laughs> now it's time for the headlines. So like top stories. Despite record profits, the Ford factory in Dagenham looks set to close. A spokesman said, in future you'll have to look in the staff toilets if you want to see a man spraying a fiesta. <laughs> <laughs> William Hague has been urging Christians to roll up their sleeves. Michael Portillo added, and can you take your watch off this time as well? <laughs> A saleswoman narrowly escaped injury yesterday when a cow fell through the roof of a car showroom. The cow later said, I honestly thought I was going to make it over the moon this time, but the little dog laughing really put me on. <laughs> Taxi drivers have been given a free tour of the new Tate Gallery extension. When asked what he thought of the exhibits, a cabbie afterwards said, Angin's too good for him. <laughs> <laughs> the BBC has denied that the latest series of Casualty isn't as realistic as it used to be. Stand clear. Push flashing button to rescue here. Barbara Windsor has just returned home after honeymooning with her toy boy husband. He revealed today, I took her to heaven and back. Thank God for mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. <laughs> with Babs being honoured today with her very own waxwork at Madame Tussauds, we thought it was time to pay tribute to one of Britain's best-loved performers. Born in 1937, Barbara Windsor is as British as roast beef, Yorkshire pudding and having your first innocent tug to carry on camping. <laughs> The daughter of a dressmaker and a bus driver, she learned much from her parents, blossoming into a nice bit of skirt that fellas would queue in the rain to ride. <laughs> she shot to fame as the brain interest in the Carry On films, delighting audiences with performances described as outstanding and pointed, and occasionally <laughs> revealing a flash of booby. Even now, despite her advancing years, Babs has never looked anything but classy perfection. <laughs> Now she can be found behind the EastEnders bar as Peggy Mitchell trying to keep two new tits in check, whilst another EastEnder pays homage to her past with the occasional carry on up the Khyber. <laughs> a truly British institution, Barbara can stand proudly alongside the very best of the nation's entertainers Rolf, Mr. Wisdom, and Canon Anne Ball. <laughs> 
Babs Windsor, a living legend. <laughs> the line between friendly encouragement and sexual harassment is a fine one. For example, if I put my hand on Daisy's shoulder, what's that? That's just friendly. Yeah, but not if you see what my other hand is doing. <laughs> Here's Paul Garner with his illuminating report. Uh, Lucy, why don't you start and tell us about your experiences? Well, the thing is, my colleagues, the men, used to make remarks about sex all the time. And a few of them used to brush past me really closely and touch my body. All of these people at this counselling session here in Croydon share a common bond, whether it be racist, ageist, sizist, or as in Lucy's case here, sexist. <laughs> They've all been victims of the evil spectre that is harassment in the workplace. Linda Jakes took her former bosses to court after relentless rude comments about her weight. Despite winning over £10,000 in damages, Linda is still very bitter. They made my life miserable for just over two years. And what sort of names did they call you? Lardy Linda Jakes. Jelly Belly Jakes. Jakes Eats Cakes. <laughs> Fatty Jakes. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Fatty Jakes and carry on stuffing your fat face. Or uh, <laughs> about, um, carry on at the Kai about fat ass instead of pass. Instead of pass, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I've got a deadline at five. Are oh, you kidding? Yeah. Oh, oh, oops. Oh. Why are you down there, love? <laughs> oh. It's obvious, of course, that a lot of skirt doesn't know the difference between harassment and just a bit of harmless fun. But if you feel that you're being sexually harassed at work, here's a couple of ways that could silence your tormentors once and for all. Every office has one high spirited prankster who enjoys photocopying his private parts and then embarrassing a female colleague with the image. How about some of that? Oh, my God! Oh, my God. <laughs> Put an end to this tomfoolery by fitting a cobbler nobbler to the office photocopier. This new program recognises male genitals and automatically slams the lid shut when a cock and balls are placed on the copy deck. Or get yourself a grope girdle. This touch-sensitive body kit can detect even the slightest fondlings of your arse and knockers, emitting a loud recorded vocal warning to the groper. Leave my ass alone, you dirty little fucker. That works pretty well. <laughs> nice ass kid. However, remember to disengage your grope girdle when you're not at work. Hey, this filthy bastard just fondled my tits off. <laughs> Here are the 11 o'clock show offices. Open-minded, educated adults work side by side without any real problems. However, all men should be aware that if you get caught with your hand up a skirt, that bit of skirt could see you get your hands up in court. This is Paul Garner, the 11 o'clock show offices, here in London. Oh, my cock and balls! Oh, my cock and burn! Now, if there's something strange in your neighbourhood, who are you going to call? No, not the Ghostbusters, surprisingly, but celebrity expert and all-round nice guy is The Sun's Dominic Mohan. Thank you. Hi, Dominic. Thanks very much for coming in. You still got the swagger. Oh, <laughs> we love it. And thanks very much for joining us again. No Bit of a regular now. Um, mm. There's so much celebrity tat around these days that how do you choose what to put in your column or who to put in your column because, you know, there must be hundreds of stories every day. And there are A-list, B-list and Z-list. Who's A-list? A-list, um, Ian Lee, Dave <laughs> Jonathan... <laughs> That's uh, you <laughs> Robbie Williams, obviously. Obviously. Uh, Mel, uh, Mel, B, Mel C, Posh and Beckham, Madonna Baby and Guy Spice? Ritchie. I don't know, Baby's a little bit dumb. So she? will she be on the B-list, for example, Baby's on the B-list, Who yeah. else is on the B-list? B-list, I think Liam and Noel are now B-list. Oh, really? Yeah, they? they've maybe... They're sort of battling against relegation. So Is that just because their yeah. album's gone... <laughs> yeah, I think they'll come back once they're back in this country and they start um, 
giving it all that, we'll be all right. They'll be right back <laughs> off the A-list. Yeah, they will be. Now, there is a Z-list. Who's on that? Is that like people like Christopher Biggins and Gary Barlow? People like that? <laughs> Definitely Gary Barlow. It's pretty much team band losers, yeah. Matt Goss, Luke Goss, anybody like that. I like the Z-list. I'd like to hang out with those guys. Would you like to be on the Z-list? Like I won't be okay. on it. I don't want to be on okay. it. Well, okay. you're, you're heading that way. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Two more weeks and I'll be on it. Are there any celebrities? So A-list is kind of Madonna, Guy Ritchie. Oh, we've got like a good that. Madonna story tomorrow. What have you got? Her little baby's going to be a boy, we've discovered. How do you find that out? Well, we've got our snouts and grasses. <laughs> <laughs> Someone <laughs> snouted that out. It's Doctors, definitely a boy. surgeons, every... No, it's definitely a, definitely How a boy. How do you know that? We've got some quite funny names as well. And we thought that perhaps Oval for a boy. <laughs> well, the other one's Lord, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice touch. Good. Or R Richie Richie, we thought. Chico Chicone. <laughs> Chico. Chico. Hey, Chico. Um, now, Spice Girl Mel C is apparently in danger of losing her man, Jay from Five. Who yeah, to? That's right. What's Caprice, apparently. Caprice, man a man eater, as we know, has been stalking him, turning up backstage at five gigs. I mean, I can't understand why anyone would want to go to a five gig. Unless <laughs> they're trying to get a well, shag she did out like of Prince it. Prince Andrews. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> true, but yeah, I mean, it, it looks like she's been calling up on his mobile. So, Do you think you know. she can hold off Caprice, Mel C? I don't know, it's a difficult choice, isn't it? Mel C and Caprice. Who would you choose? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, what is what she's got going against the Caprice is, you know, who, who'd want uh, Tony Adams and Rod Stewart seconds? Well, if it's Caprice, I would, actually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got so, yeah, that. me too, I'm with you. <laughs> now, sorry, it was announced that Michael Caine is to be knighted. Do you think he deserves it? Oh, well, I think anyone who's done Alfie, Get Carter and the Italian job deserves a... OK, I'll stop you there. Eye. Somebody's done The Swarm, uh, Ashanti and Jaws mm. the Revenge. <laughs> now, Ainsley Harriet apparently has made the leap across the Atlantic and mm. is now massive in the States. Ainsley Harriet. How mm. the hell has this happened? Is that true? Well, I've been, look I look I've been looking into this, putting the feelers out, and um, I've got absolutely no idea. <laughs> He is big in the States, isn't he? He is, yeah, he's got the Jay Leno show and... He's got some network show all across the States. They love him. So they weird. just love food, though, because they're all fat, so maybe that's... <laughs> is, is there any way you can promise that he will never, ever come back to this country? Well, I've got a friend at Customs, so I'm going to have a look. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dominic Mohan. You <laughs> <laughs> love it. The great dictators have always revelled in the dignified titles bestowed upon them by their people. Hitler was der Führer, Franco was Il Caudillo, and Richard Madeley was known as that arrogant spiv-off of the telly. <laughs> Tonight, in his continuing series on social history, Ricky Gervais profiles Il Duce. Benito Mussolini was born in 1883 into humble beginnings. His father was a blacksmith and his mother was the local schoolmistress. But she was a looker, like him in a black dress. In fact, to avoid confusion, he shaved his moustache off. <laughs> he was a schoolteacher himself for a year, but in 1902 fled to Switzerland to evade military service. Perfect credentials for an Italian leader. <laughs> As founder of the fascist movement in 1919 and prime minister from 1922, he became known as Il Duce, or the leader and was Italian dictator from 1925 to 1943. He invaded Ethiopia. Mm, oh, Ethiopia. You're brave. <laughs> Intervened in the Spanish Civil War. Yeah, Civil War. And conquered Albania. Oh, you conquered Albania, did you? You're hard. Let's have a look what happened when he had to go at us. He ran away. In fact, let's take another look at this great Italian leader. Ran away from home. Ran away from the army. Ran away from us. Resigned in 1943. That's sort of running away. And was then shot and killed running away. In fact, the only exercise the fat fucker ever got was running away. That's your leader. Now, if you're watching this at home and sucking on a ginger nut, either you're enjoying a lovely biscuit or your Paul Scholes is missus. <laughs> Either way, you're bound to have seen a new poster campaign which uses images of a ginger family to advertise a gas company. The ad's been accused of portraying redheads in a negative light with the slogan, there are some things in life you can't choose, forcing some gingers to snap. Well, we say enough is enough. It's time our ginger brethren were respected for the brightness they bring to all our lives. Time now to look at the all-time top five ginger geniuses. In at number five, Ralph Mouth. 
Hunky Ralph. Hunky Ralph was a role model to kids across the nation, bravely hanging around with an older man in leathers who frequently forced him into the toilets of a burger bar. And number four, Robin Cook. Robin Cook, or the face as he's known in Whitehall, has highlighted ginger issues around the world. Some detractors have called him an ugly ginger shit. We say that's his special skill. Who else could hold public office looking like a shriveled russet bollock? At number three, Nicholas Witchell. <laughs> or, as he's known to lady newsreaders, the Auburn Horn. <laughs> Witchell is the master at delivering hard news without ever sniggering at the reflection of his dazzling fiery barnet. In at number two, Mick Hucknall. With his astonishing voice, amazing songwriting ability and 15 illustrious years of chart success, Hucknall has rightly earned the title of That Ginger Bloke from Simply Red. <laughs> and in at number one, Basil Brush. <laughs> Yeah, you see, Basil is everything a ginger person should be. He's feisty, fun-loving, and he only makes a noise when he's fisted. <laughs> that was our positive role model ginger top five. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of part one. Still to come, homespun views from PR maestro Max Clifford. And straight after the break, classic clips of bondage victims exploding with chained heat. <laughs> but mm. first, a message from a devoted celebrity fan. My name's Ken Livingstone, and there's nothing I like more than throwing stones at dogs. Sometimes I do it at night with a torch. You can usually get a good blow to the head when it's dark. You should hear them bark. It cracks me up. <laughs> See you after the break. Nineteen ninety and strange ways here we come. Why? To get those rowdy lags off the bloody roof. Who do they think they are? Dex's midnight runners? Come off it, Eileen. But who can get these lawless shits down? The SAS? The Navy SEALs? No! Send in the ant copter! This riot taught us all one vital lesson. The ant copter's fucking useless. From 10 years ago today, and this is the 11 o'clock show on Tuesday, April the 18th. Coming up later, Max Clifford. But first, did you know that smell is the key to memory? Yeah, I did, Daisy. It explains why every time I smell lavender, I'm instantly reminded of my childhood. Oh, did you grow up in the country? Not quite, but just when I was young, I was regularly cuddled by a potpourri salesman called Steve. <laughs> but can smell really take you back in time? Ian made this report. Mm. A report out today says that smells are a better aid to memory than words or images. Maybe that's why elephants never forget. They sleep in their own shit. I've come into London to see what the public thinks. Do you think that smells can trigger memories? Yes, sometimes. OK, do me a favour. Sniff my fingers. What does that remind you of? I can't tell exactly. <laughs> never been with a lady, have you? Uh -huh. Now, obviously, they, they say that, that smell helps you remember. And I've got to say, just by standing by, you must, you must have a lot of memories in you, have you? I suppose I have. Mm, I yeah, yeah, no, I, I can smell you have. In classrooms in this country, they're introducing scenting of desks, where children uh, between the ages of 5 and 16 are encouraged to actually piss on their desks yes, to leave their scent. Yes. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it's, it's, it's nature on the farm. There are small kids <laughs> and, 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 and they leave them smell on the desk. You've got to expect that. Scent helps you remember things, so we're going to try something. You can smell, you can, you can smell everything freely now, can't you? No, enough, yeah. Okay, now try and remember these numbers for me. One, three, seven. Can you remember those? Yeah, one, three, seven. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to stop you smelling for a second. Now, can you smell anything? Apart from my fingers. Try and remember these numbers, okay? One, three, seven. Now, just smell this and just let us know what that reminds you of. Perfume. It smells real nice. So it smells of lovely perfumes. It like create a nice romantic, romantic image for you. Yeah. Okay, take your blindfold off. Now, you're just smelling a load of man spunk there. So, man spunk <laughs> makes you feel romantic and, and uh, sexy, does it? No, no, no. You're saying the smell of it does. What, where have you come into close contact sniffing a lot of this? I haven't. It's, just, it's the smell itself. It smells like perfume. Is, it, is this the sort of thing you might dab a bit of this on your neck one morning just to make sure? <laughs> yeah, that smell was there, but not the um, cam. 1,486,312. Okay, try and remember those numbers without smelling. Have I got a clue? Right, see, it works, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Did you say that, that actually having your scent blocked like that has stopped you remembering things? I'd say so, yeah. 
So there we have it. It appears that if you can't smell, you can't remember. This has been Ian Lee, the 11 o'clock show, London. Time now for tonight's guest. David Mellon named him the sleazebag sleazebag and Edwina Curry described him as that little turd. We know him better as the country's most famous spin doctor. Please welcome Max Clifford. Have a seat. Thanks very much for coming along. Nice to have you again. Now, you're described sometimes as a spin doctor. What exactly does that mean? <clears throat> um, you want to get the message across that's most beneficial to the people that are paying you vast sums of money. Oh, so the vast sums of money. That's the thing. Is spin doctoring basically just telling porky pies, telling lies? Oh, no. No, there's more to, more to it than telling lies. It's also about deceit, propaganda, corruption. <laughs> so they're, they're posh words for lies? Well, no, it's just extensions of. You know, it's far more... Uh, <laughs> Far more than just lies. Can we, in that case, can we believe anything we read in the papers then? No. Oh, excellent. Well, that's that sorted. <laughs> oh, that's that done. And we've got, I think we've got a question from our website here for you, Max. If Freddie Starr didn't really eat that hamster, what did he do with it? <laughs> well, I've seen Freddie do a lot of funny things over the years, but I think you'd have to ask Richard Gere. <laughs> right, OK. <laughs> or, or maybe even Prince Andrew. Oh, OK. But you don't know about that yet. Is there, is there a Prince Andrew scandal brewing about a hamster? That's what Daisy told me. Okay. Again, I'm only I, repeating what she heard. See, you're, I like the clever and way you point the blame here. on us it as well. It all happens here. Very, so. very exciting. Now, you claim that any situation can be turned around with good PR. So Potentially. Ha so how would you help the following people? Frank Dobson, whose mayoral campaign is sinking pretty fast. Well, it? it never really got going, did it? He'd have to pick a fight with Tony Blair and say, I totally disagree with you because everybody believes that he doesn't says everything Tony Blair wants him to. So that would be so an you'd encourage way. him to have a punch up with he'd the have to, He'd have to do something that maybe make people think, well, maybe he isn't just a yes man for Tony Blair. If Frank Dobson lamped Tony Blair, I would definitely vote, vote for him. Now, what about the bloke who runs the Lib Dems? Who's that? <laughs> Anybody know? Yeah. Is, is, is the, the well, it's Scots Giles player. Kennedy, isn't it? Yes. But we didn't really know that. No. What, could, what, does he, what, what can he do to raise his profile? I think he'd have to have a high-profile relationship with someone who the public did know. That would lift his profile. So if he got copped off with me, <laughs> yeah. if, if Charles Kennedy copped off with me, it could help the Lib Dems or, win the Or election. someone that is amazingly popular and, and talented and attractive that everybody right. loves, like Anthea Turner. Right, so not, not me then. <laughs> I get what you're saying. And finally, how could you help Paulie Yates? I think, again, you're the answer there, because... <laughs> I'm not getting involved in that one. That's no, but then, <laughs> then you see, you know, picking up with someone who is totally unknown would bring you into prominence, mm. you see, and people would feel possibly sorry yeah. for both of you. Yeah, they feel very sorry for me. I'm not getting involved in that yeah. deep pit. And um, finally, Max, we hope that after tonight you'll only circulate good stories about us, because if you do remember what happened last time, can I just show a picture? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Max Clifford. Thanks so much, Max. Thanks so much. Cheers. Yourself in there. Yeah. Well, that's about it for tonight's show. Except for the late news that after years out of the limelight, Magnum star Tom Selleck is set to return with a new album of light jazz. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go, a chance for you, the viewer, to have your say about an issue that's close to your heart. Tonight, ref from Liverpool on drugs in sport. Good night. Good night. Mate, right, it's nearly time for the Olympics, and you know, you know it's going to be the same old shite all over again. Uh, we had to ban him because we found him to be taking illegal performance-enhancing drugs. My ass, mate. If you're going to take drugs, right, if you're going to take drugs, do it properly, la. Myself and Tony, we would pay top dollar to see the relay mashed up on a big bag of bank gear. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's correct, la. Right, you're down at the changing rooms. First two guys, they can't get out of there, man. They're covered head to toe in their own soil, laughing like drain. They don't even know what day it is, la. Next fella, he's made it to the track, right? He's all raring to go. Bang, the gun goes off. He thinks the yardies are in town, la. He shits himself and passes out. Fourth fella, he's standing there, right? He's got his shorts open. He's looking down, he's talking to his own cock. He thinks it's his mum, la. All right, man. I'm Auntie Jean. I've been worried about her hair. Now, mate, that is proper drug taking. None of this building up your muscles, shit, lah. Do something that's worth getting banned for is correct. <laughs>